I guess first things first, let's uh, let's go back to Saturday for you and and what what was going through your mind when when everything was at the at the peak of you know emotions high and and everybody hitting the deck and you know what what were you going through? Well, you know, as a referee for the last 34 years, this is close to my 200th World Championship fight, and every fight to me brings a lot of excitement. And uh, it was a fight crowd that brought a lot of electricity in the air at the MGM Hotel in Las Vegas. And uh, as a referee, I have to think like an official. I don't think like a fan with emotions. And of course, when you have a Floyd Mayweather and uh, a Victor Ortiz uh, in the ring, they're both fighting to maintain that level on the championship level, Ortiz to retain his title and Mayweather to show the world that he is the best fighter out there. It was a fight that a referee, only a referee with good experience behind him can handle that situation. And as a referee, you have to be prepared for the unexpected. And as a referee, that night, the unexpected happened. And I told referees when I get seminars around the world, be on your toes and be sharp at all times because things will occur once in a blue moon something freaky will happen like the fan man that came into Las Vegas over at Caesars when Evander Holyfield was fighting the Reddick Bow and who would ever thought that a fan man would come in on, on a parachute into the ring well that night at the uh, Mayweather Ortiz fight what occurred there was that uh, Ortiz a young fighter with a lot of spirit and determination wanted to win so bad and he comes from a, a, a background uh, of, of hardship and he, he's, he would strive to be the best. He was smart enough to go to college and get a good education but he also wanted to be the, word, the best champion in the world. And that night facing Floyd Mayweather he fought one of the best fighters in the world, but he thought that Mayweather was going to have one of those nights at the age of 30, you can get old overnight. He thought he can conquer the world and hopefully fight Manny Pacquiao for the big paycheck. Well, unfortunately, Victor Ortiz was outclassed. He was hit with repeated right hands. He was in a different league and he's getting frustrated as he's getting to the third round the fourth round you can see he was bewildered by what was going on so now what happens in the fourth round he opts to stop fighting dirty when a fighter is, is hurt he loses the control he's not thinking right so you make mistakes he made two big mistakes that night, and I'll go with the first one. The first one was intentionally headbutting Floyd Mayweather, cutting him on the lip. I called time, separated them. I took a point for the flagrant foul, which is a no-no in boxing. Went to the judges, one-point deduction. I scolded him. I warned him about what he just committed. To please stop that and it was something that he should have not not done now I give my hand signal to commence the bout when I give my hand signal I don't have to say verbally I could just my signal is my hand is it to resume the contest well I look at the timekeeper just to make sure that the clock is running because I already give the signal he makes a grave mistake by lowering his guards again to apologize he apologized after I did the point deduction. He even kissed Mayweather on the cheek. So apologetic about what the, the, the infraction that he committed. It was a no-no. But now he wants to, when I said time in, time is in, buddy. You do not lower your guards again. That's why we say keep your guards up at all times when I give him the instructions. And he let his guards down to apologize again because he felt so guilty of the grave mistake he made. Mayweather rightfully upset, took advantage of the opening and clocked him with a left hook and a straight right hand and I had to count him out. 
very unpopular call uh, for a fighter to retain or to win the championship, uh, Mayweather, because we don't want to see like sportsmen, we want to see sportsmen like conduct. However, when the referee says time, that means to fight, not to start embracing and kissing again. We didn't need that. He did it once, not the second time. Second time, Floyd Meta took advantage of it and knocked him out. Uh, a very unpopular call because it's like if I tell you, hey, look, your lace is un untied. You look down, I'm going to clock you. People don't like that. Even though it's legal, under the guidelines of boxing, the rule says keep your guards at all times. The referee said time in. Shame on you for letting your guards down. And, and Mayweather took advantage of it. Like Mark, uh, uh, the commentator, Larry Merchant, said afterwards, he says it was a legal sucker punch something that we don't see in boxing. People say, well, you know, referee Joe Cortez could have disqualified uh, Mayweather. Well, that's not the rules that say that. When I say time in, the clock is running, anything that happens within the legal rules, which is punch, and, and, and to beat your opponent, Mayweather took advantage of it, and that's what happened Saturday night. As a former boxer and a, and a Hall of Fame referee, how thankful are you that you were the one that, that was refereeing uh, this, well, this bout? Well, you know, after being inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame this past June, it was an honor for me to referee a mega fight like this coming out of the induction. And my commissioners and, uh, and, and boxing uh, historians, people that know boxing, congratulated me for a job well done. But the fans don't want to see that. They think that Joe made a grave mistake by uh, letting Mayweather get away with that. That's something, I, that's something I, could not, I could not help. When I look at the tank keep outside the ring, I'm just making sure, as captain of the ship, that every person that's working that night, that, including the tank keeper, which is under my supervision, when I gave him the seat, I want to make sure that he had the clock running. I don't want him to, to fall asleep at the bell and, uh, and let the round go longer. Or, so I just make sure that he was on time with my call, which he was. There are, there are some pretty interesting still photos of you as you're turning around and the look on your face. What, what was the first thing that was going through your mind when you turn around? And, and well, you know, if happened? I'm going to the timekeeper, I'm telling the timekeeper, you know, make sure that the time is in. He just nodded to me, time is in. I can see from here that a punch is coming. I look, because, you know, I don't know if the punch is coming towards me. I look in surprise because I was surprised that this uh, Victor Ortiz would drop his guards. It was just something we don't do in boxing. I was surprised, more surprised at the mistake that he, he made by lowering his guards. Then I saw the right hand follow that, and he, down goes Ortiz. I was very surprised, just like everybody else around the world. One, one message that you talked to the kids about tonight was, was thick skin, and there was a lot of comments about you uh, made this week by, by uh, you know, media all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, just talk about that and, and how you've been able to deal with that. Well, you know, as a referee, I tell referees around the world, you have to have thick skin in this business because you've got to be able to take the, the criticism, the good ones and the bad ones, because that's, as a referee, you, you damn if you do, damn if you don't. But uh, I, I was telling the students here tonight at the university that uh, in life, uh, people will try to put you down. They can get knocked down, but you have to get up and keep going forward. And I can take all the criticisms. I know I did my job the way I was supposed to as a referee. But I'm, trying to, I'm not defending myself. I'm trying to educate the fans uh, around the world who don't know boxing. Me being in boxing for over 40 years, as, uh, well, over 50 years since I started boxing as a fighter myself, I'm trying to educate the fans and some of the sports writers that don't know the sport. Because when we have seminars, I look around, I never see a sports reporter in our seminars where we talk about different issues like what happened Saturday night and what to do and what not to do. You hinted at retirement. What's the possibility of, of this dramatic bout being your last one? No, no. Uh, with a fight like this, you don't go out with a fight like this. You see, because, uh, like I said, people may think that uh, I, if I retire because I retired, what happened Saturday night? No, absolutely not. I've been thinking about retirement after I got inducted into the Hall of Fame, but I think there's uh, still a little fire left in my belly to keep going for a couple of more major fights. Kyle, anything else you can think of? At the end of the fight, Ortiz, uh, he was smiling. He seemed like, like, seemed like he was just happy to be there. What do you think was going through his mind at the time, and did he uh, say anything? When, uh, when Victor Ortiz uh, got up and he recovered after a knockout, I went over to him to make sure that he was okay, and he was smiling at me, and he said, you know, like, wow, you know, I, I'm sorry, and I, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, he apologized to me a couple of times. I said, it's all right. 
I hope you learn from these mistakes and hope you don't do them again. And uh, I think with that, he goes away uh, becoming, hopefully, he learned from his mistakes that will make him a better fighter and better person down the line, cleaner and better. You've refereed a, a, lot, of, a lot of bouts. D have you ever seen a response like that from, from the outcome that he was dealing with? Uh, the outcome as far as the media as, or as, as no, fighters? As from him that, that he was still apologetic to you oh, even because, after he got knocked out. Yeah, well, you know, first of all, Victor Ortiz is an intelligent young man who has a great, uh, uh, a great heart. He's, uh, he's, he's a, he's a well-educated gentleman who's, who's gone to college. And uh, he, he knew he made a big, big mistake. And he knows it was the opportunity, the best opportunity of his life. And when you make a grave mistake like that by using dirty tactics, by using the headbutt to, cut, to, to hurt your opponent, because you can't hurt him with your, with your glove, that he, he, he opted to go with the head. He was so frustrated. He realized afterward, after he got knocked out, that, you know, like, I'm sorry, you know, Joe. I'm, you know, he, he realized he made a big mistake. And I think he learned from that. He never protested about my call. He was more in shock himself for what occurred because of the, uh, the ignorance that, that, that he put into that action at that moment. It was just plain ignorance and uh, immature and not having the experience. And hopefully he learns from the experience. Like all, we, like all of us in life, we make a mistake, we learn from it, and we go forward and become better. And last thing for me, what's the rush like for you to be, be in the ring with millions of people watching around the world? Well, you know, that night there was over 500 million people from what I understand watching the, the fight. And for me, um, I think I get more nervous talking to an audience here in the auditorium than I do uh, uh, refereeing the fights. But I, uh, it's, a, it's a great feeling. It's a great honor because uh, I, I try to tell young referees that are up and coming that uh, if I did it, you can do it as well. But uh, uh, you got to have thick skin and uh, be like a champion, get knocked down, and get up, and keep going forward. Awesome. Any, you good? Um, I have one more question. Um, you spoke briefly about uh, how the UFC has been so successful with marketing, and part of that is there's, you know, one division, one champ. What kind of uh, changes do you think boxing really needs to make to really be able to kind of create uh, the stars and everything and really get the feeling of, the, oh, this guy's the man, you know, kind of like how they, some people have created the, uh, the linear championship, the idea of that. What kind of changes do you think boxing needs to make to their model? Well, you know, UFC, the Fatita brothers are able to be at their own number is over a dozen hotels in Las Vegas uh, with station casinos. They were able to invest $4 million when they purchased UFC, and they were able to have a experts of good, a good marketing team. And anything you do when you have a business, you, have a, have, you gotta have a good marketing plan. And they utilize their, 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 their team with all the efforts and making it to be at the best level as possible. In boxing, unfortunately, they don't have, they, they don't use the strategy that they use in UFC. These guys, the Fatita brothers, are very uh, uh, successful with what they have in the casinos because they were able to sit down with the experts and marketing and sales and, and, and doing the right things to, to move on without any flaws. And what they have been able to accomplish in the last 10 years, boxing hasn't been able to do in the last 100 years. So it, it shows you that you, you got to have money to, to build off of it, and, and they build off their, their, their investment, and now they're worth over a billion dollars. So uh, I think that boxing, what boxing needs is a, more, a little bit more marketing. I think that the promoters should create more, a more like a reality show like UFC have done. They're on television. They're really all over the world. They do every magazine, every television network, every opportunity they can. They're out there marketing their, their sport. And I think that uh, being that we have no more heavyweight champions in, in, here in the United States, we always control the heavyweight division. We haven't, done, haven't controlled the heavyweight division since Mike Tyson uh, got beat uh, over 10 years ago. So the sport of boxing has diminished to some extent. But I think that with the newcomers in boxing now, the Pacquiao, the Mayweathers, and uh, Canelo Alvarez, and uh, there's a young uh, bunch of uh, uh, champions out there that have to get more exposure. But UFC is doing a great job, and I have to take off my hat to them for their marketing skills. Awesome. Thank you very much. We appreciate your yeah. time.